All right, let's start by talking about the simple linear regression model, okay? And I wanna talk about this using an example. So suppose I go out and I collect data on income and I have the average income for uh, people in different countries, okay? And so that's gonna be my uh, regressor variable, x. And then I have life expectancy, and life expectancy is going to be my uh, response variable y. Okay, so people's average life expectancy. So I go out and I collect some data and I get, you know, all this different data, um, x1, y1. So this is the life expectancy and income for the first country. Uh, x2, y2, the income and life expectancy for the second country all the way through to however many countries I collect data on, xn, yn, okay? And if I were to plot this, right, where I have y, my life expectancy, and x, my income, um, I see that, uh, you know, it's, it's not that income is a direct predictor of life, life expectancy, uh, so they don't fit directly on a linear line, my data, but they have this positive correlation, uh, meaning the more income we have, the uh, higher our life expectancy um, within a certain range of, of my income, right? It's, it's not that life expectancy continues on forever, but within a certain range of this different income, I see this linear relationship, okay? And the idea behind a simple linear regression model is I want to uh, basically predict the life expectancy given a certain income. And the way I'll do this is I'll try to form, form a line that best fits this data, all right? So this line here, this is my linear regression line. And using this line, I can make predictions. Uh, predicted values of y are gonna be called y hat, okay? So this line is a predicted uh, value of this um, life expectancy, okay? Um, so what is my simple linear regression model? Let's break down this, uh, these words here, simple, starting with the word simple. What does simple mean? Simple means that I have a single regress or variable. Okay, x. So a single regressor variable x. Um, many things might predict life expectancy, such as how much money you spend on your healthcare system. Um, but right now, I only have one um, thing predicting life expectancy, and that is income. Okay, so only one regressor variable. In this case, it is income. Okay, um, what does linear mean? Linear means that we are linear in x. Linear in x. All right, so we have this, this linear line here. All right, so what is the simple linear regression model? It is y, i, okay? So these are my observations, right? We have from up above, we see y sub one, right? When i is one, this would be this first one. All right, equals beta naught, okay, plus beta one times x sub i. Okay, so here's x sub i, right? Where i is one, right? And i is gonna go from one to all the way to n. Now, of course, our data doesn't fit on a perfect line, right? This is a perfect linear line where we have an intercept and a slope. This isn't a perfect, our data does not fit on this perfect line. So instead, I also will need an error term, right? And that error term is different for every observation. Okay, and the error term is basically the distance between this line and our observed values. Okay, so that's epsilon. Right? So, oops. So y is our response variable the response variable, 
Let me scroll down. Beta 0 is the intercept. Beta 1 is the slope. All right. uh, and epsilon is the model error. All right. And I do want to point out that most of the time, the slope is what we're interested in. We're not usually interested in the intercept. Okay. In this particular case, if I go up to back to my back up here, um, let me erase this to make it a little neater. We see here, where is the intercept? The intercept is here. So when x or income is zero, it's the value of the life expectancy. Now in this situation, it may be appropriate to interpret the intercept, but a lot of times it's not appropriate to interpret the intercept just because when x is zero, it's not always reasonable to have a value of y or the value of y that the model predicts is not a reasonable prediction. Okay, and in general, you want to be careful that when you're using these models, you you want to only really um, make interpretations of the model within the range of your observed x values. Okay, so the range of the observed x values gives you a range of observed y values, and that is where you want to uh, be able to make your predictions uh, using this model. But you do not want to make predictions um, outside of that range of x values that you observed. Okay. Now when I ran this model, and I'll show how to do this later, because this was with actual data, I ran it and I found uh, this was my model. So the predicted y value equals 65.83 plus 0 0.0003 times xi. Okay. So my predicted uh, life expectancy. Now, when xi is zero, so my intercept 65.83, here again, that may be interpretable all right, in this scenario, right? Uh, because if I have observations that are near um, where someone makes almost no money, if I observe that, then it makes sense for me to predict or to um, interpret that intercept. So uh, people who make no money are expected to live about 65.83 years. Then the way I would interpret this inner, um, this slope is that for each additional increase, each dollar increase in income, their increase in life expectancy is 0 0.003 years. Okay? So, and again, you would only interpret that within our observed range of x. Now, if I can't just keep on going on and on forever for x, so really, really high incomes, is not gonna lead to a, a really, really high um, life expectancy, right? There are limits to how long uh, people can live. And so once again, you must only interpret this within your, the range of your observed x values. Okay, so there you have it. That is the basic uh, simple linear regression model. Now, um, a lot of times we are going to talk about the centered model, okay? So I want to talk about that here for a minute too. The centered model, right? And in short, what we do with the centered model is instead of using this, uh, this, this intercept, we're going to use beta naught star. So this is not an intercept, right? But this is going to be a different coefficient. And the way we define beta naught star, it is beta naught plus beta 1 x bar, right? And so, you know, using algebra, if I subtract beta 1 x bar from both sides, uh, and I would have beta 0 equals beta naught x star uh, minus beta 1 x bar, okay? If I were to then plug this beta naught, this beta naught here, into this model here, right? Let's see what happens when I do that. Let me scroll down. So I have yi equals beta naught 
plus beta 1 x i plus the error term. Okay, go ahead and plug in this new beta naught star minus beta 1 x bar plus beta 1 x i plus this error term. Okay, just rearrange these two. I just want to rewrite them in the different order, right? Which I'm allowed to do. X i minus beta 1 x bar plus epsilon i. Now pull out beta 1 here and I get my centered model. X i minus x bar plus epsilon i. Okay, now it's called the centered model because your x's are centered. So x's are centered, right? Each x observation, you subtract its mean, okay? So by subtracting its mean, you're centering it. Now we are gonna use this model a lot. So I encourage you to make sense of it and to realize that it is exactly the same as the original uh, model. Okay, so these guys are exactly the same. Uh, when you're using the centered model, you need to always remember beta naught star is equal to beta naught plus beta one x bar. You do not interpret beta naught star exactly the same way that you interpret beta naught. Beta naught is the intercept. Beta naught star is, well, it's this. Okay.